most crypto fund managers, if they could, would already be investing in ETH. Insane. In the past 24 hours, Pump.Fund has launched 23,000 tokens. If you want to be able to generate 100x, 1,000x returns in a short time period, really the only place to go are memes. Hi, guys, and welcome to What's the Meta. I'm your host, Ryan S. Gladwin, and I'm here with Renick Pally, the founder of Stratos, a hedge fund that invested in dog with hat when it was just one cent, simply because it had a hat. How are you, mate? Good. Good to see you. If I remember correctly, Stratos didn't just invest in Dog with Hat. It's also invested in a number of other meme coins. Could you briefly explain to me sort of the philosophy around investing in meme coins and what tokens you do and don't invest in? So we have a couple of different funds at Stratos. Mostly what we do is early stage venture, but we also have a liquid hedge fund. And in that hedge fund, the goal is to outperform the crypto market broadly. We've been in crypto since 2016. You know, one of the things that we've seen emerge over the last few cycles are memes. Obviously, we saw that in the stock market as well in, in 2021 and, you know, recent resurgence there. And our perspective on memes is that they're not going away. They're a significant portion of the crypto space. They tend to garner outsized attention relative to their market cap. And our view is one of the scarcest assets in the world today is attention. And so we thought that we had to have a perspective on investing in memes and how they might impact the overall market in crypto. That was really before Pump.Fund took off. I think Solana really enabled that. But that perspective has turned out to be true from a number of angles. One is just clearly the attention angle of memes. Relative to market cap, the trading volume of memes is substantially higher than what you would predict if you were to look at the overall crypto market and just try and have some sort of predictive model on that. The other is just the attention around it. If you look at you know the number of publications that have come out about memes or the amount of discussion that happens on crypto Twitter about memes or just the community angle about it. So that's certainly true. And then if you look at the price performance of memes, now there's huge dispersion within the meme asset class in terms of performance. But you know, if you didn't own some of the key memes this year, it actually became very difficult to outperform the market. So happy to talk about that in more detail. But I guess at a high level, the meme thesis seems to be alive and well. Why do you think memes are outperforming the general crypto landscape? When we think of the crypto landscape, you kind of have to segment the world into alts and majors. And so majors are Bitcoin and ETH. You could argue that Solana is making its way into the majors category. But just looking at Bitcoin and ETH, obviously they have the ETF behind them. More recently, Ethereum, but Bitcoin almost for the whole year. And so they have the benefit of Wall Street flows and retail flows from people who otherwise wouldn't have bought crypto directly. So they behave sort of differently. They also have no token overhangs other than you know things like Mt. Gox and FTX, etc. German selling, US selling, you know, we, we can talk about that. But the tokens, there, there aren't any VCs or investors who are holding tokens who are waiting to have them unlocked. Then you have Solana, which has a little bit of that, but for the most part, it's floating market cap is pretty similar to its fully diluted market cap. And then you have alts. And then within alts, the vast majority of the tokens, especially the ones that have been launched recently, have large token unlock overhangs. The floating market cap to fully diluted market cap is a very low ratio. So, you know, there's this meme out there in the market today about high FTV, low float tokens, and how, you know, they've all basically traded down and to the right this year since they launched. And then you have memes, which are a subset of the alts, but have very different characteristics from, you know, the VC backed sort of technology coins. And they have no unlocks. They have no token overhang. They oftentimes are not purporting to do anything other than be a meme. There's kind of this instinct in the market now where if you want to be able to generate 100x, 1000x returns in a short time period, really the only place to go are memes. And so that's created this self-perpetuating feedback loop where people create new memes at a, a very high pace. You know, I saw one stat that it was half a million a month of pumped up fun. And so there's this incentive for people to engage in that area of the market that doesn't really exist in the other subsets of alts. You touched on it there about the amount of meme coins that are being launched is insane. In the past 24 hours, pumped up fun has launched 23,000 tokens. And it's just, it's an amount of tokens that I can't even really fathom. I think only 1% of those tokens actually graduated to radium. Do you think that saturation of meme coins is becoming an issue? It's sort of something that we're seeing a lot of people speak about now. There are so many meme coins that are being launched by Pump.Fun as well as all these other launch pads that it's sort of kind of 
becoming hard for meme coin traders to to pick the winners. I absolutely think that's the case. I think that the world was a different place even in early December when we first bought WIF. It was clear to us at the time that WIF in some ways was like a bonk echo trade. And for the people who missed out on bonk, they would look for something similar, probably in the dog category with something unique that was on Solana that had a low market cap. And so, you know, one of the things that made us interested in it was that the fact that there wasn't a lot of other similar memes at the time. And now fast forward to today, you would never identify with, you know, it's it's like finding the needle in the haystack and neither would anyone else, meaning that the likelihood that it would reach escape velocity and get to a high market cap. And then, you know, because these things have their own sort of reflexivity, once a meme gets above 50 million or 100 million market cap, it's generating more interest. And so then it can continue to grow. And once you get to a certain market cap, let's say 500 million with a distributed base of holders, the downside risk starts to decline, at least, you know, the rug pull risk starts to decline. So the probability today of any one of these new memes getting to that level is significantly lower just because, as you said, the saturation of the market and the, and the number of memes. So I think the meme trading space is completely different today than it was even 10 months ago. How do you as a fund select tokens for you guys to invest in? We have a perspective on where we are in the cycle. That's the first step, which is really more of a macro perspective, which is to say, how much of our portfolio do we want to have in majors? And then how much do we want to have in alts? And of that, you know, what is our ETH to BTC ratio? And then where do we put Solana in that bucket? So our perspective has been that Bitcoin would outperform this year. And it, it has outperformed Ethereum. It's outperformed alts as a category because Bitcoin dominance has increased. The only subset of alts that have outperformed Bitcoin are memes. And then you have Solana, which really is kind of in between alts and majors. And we've our largest overweight as a fund is it has been in Solana. So we've outperformed Bitcoin and alts. So overall, you know, depending on the time period you look at, we've been we've outperformed the market year to date. We've had some months where we didn't outperform the market, but that's just because it's been a choppy market. If you if you were overweight alts in any one of these months, you could have underperformed the market just because. You know, we've had some pretty significant drawdown. So from the macro perspective, we look at our overall portfolio composition in the way that I just described. And then within alts, we look at what subsets of alts do we think will outperform the alts category overall. So right now we're about equal weight alts relative to the market because we think that we're at a period of chop today. We're going to continue to be in this period until Bitcoin breaks out and is you know, definitively above old all time highs, which is, you know, somewhere in the mid 70s and then stays there or increases beyond that. And once that happens, we think we're going to start to get more of an alt cycle and then alts will start to outperform the majors. And so we'll go increase our portfolio exposure to alts at that time. But then within the alts category, getting to memes, one of the reasons why we're excited about memes is, like I said, there's a completely different expectation of what the memes are supposed to do versus these venture backed coins. And our view was, you know, we're not really, we, one could argue that we haven't even really started a true new crypto cycle in the sense that there isn't a killer app in crypto today that's really driving new people into the space. And what I mean by that is if you remember 2020, we had DeFi summer, which was this totally novel thing. And we had yield farming and we had these things that were bringing people who were not in the crypto space into it. And so it was a net inflow of capital, really a time when new applications were being adopted and there was consumer demand for something in crypto. Today, obviously, we still have DeFi and still works very well and it continues to evolve, but it's not a zero to one step change new thing. And then if you think about memes, you could argue they are kind of a killer app. You know, memes are very different today than they were in 2020 or 2021. So that started to bring in new attention. And we thought, you know, let's let's make a bet that this is going to have a run, especially since it doesn't have the market mechanics or dilution issues that all the other venture backed coins have. So so that's how we thought about it at a high level. Plus, you know, if you look at the performance of memes, even last cycle, Doge and SHIB, you know, once we had a Bitcoin all time high, they had the best performance of any tokens in crypto. So those two things together, both the fact that it was bringing new capital into the space and is kind of like the initial new product market fit for crypto for this cycle, that then also displays a lot of upside asymmetry, kind of helped us come to the conclusion that we should have a overweight memes in the fund. Yeah. So within that meme portion of the fund, 
how are you selecting memes? Like, I, I think when we spoke last time, you're basically saying you hit a winner with dog with hat hit, hitting it at one cent. You're not trying to look for those sort of tokens. You're more looking at the the larger cap tokens, ones that you can sort of trust aren't going to be rug pulls. What is that process like? How, how do you research a meme coin? Like I said before, there was a time period where we were more interested in trying to find things like with before pumped up fun and the whole space really exploded. Today, our perspective is we want to have broad meme market exposure, meaning how do we get exposure to sort of the meme beta without necessarily taking outsized risk. And so the way that we do that is you rank order the entire universe of memes, you'll see that there's, you know, seven to 10 memes that are really a power law in terms of their market cap relative to the rest of the meme category. And so we own those as a way to get that broad exposure. It's sort of an index of memes, if you will, of the blue chips as a way to get what we think will be a large portion of the meme upside without necessarily having to spend a lot of time trying to find the next 10 million market cap meme because I'm not going to sit here and try and tell you that we have that level of expertise. I think that is a completely different type of investing mentality than what we know how to do. And that's just because there, there's so many of them, as we mentioned before, it's, it's a different world today than it was. Have you hit any winners since we last spoke, since the dog with hat winner? Have you sort of got early on any meme coin hype trains? We've had some positive performances. We own a lot of Pepe. So there was a time period where that was performing really well. It's it's since retraced some of its gains, but overall has been a good performer. We were early investors in Costco, which for a time had a fairly good return. We had like 10x, but you know, it didn't play out as we had expected. I think that was kind of a flop, but it's not dead. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. The interesting thing about crypto tokens is they have zero time decay. They're like call options with zero zero time to get decay. So there's a ton of embedded leverage in these things. From some perspective, the best thing to do is just to hold them forever and, and wait for them to pump. Because as we've all seen, there are there are lots of circumstances where coins seem like they're dead. And you know, they had their all time high three years ago, and then they pump for reasons that people can't understand. And they, you know, exceed their old all time highs. So you know, I'm not saying that Costco is dead by any means, but at least for the time period that we had it, the price performance was a little bit lackluster. But I, I think that's really more of a function of the overall macro environment where liquidity started to dry up and the majors stopped performing. And so, of course, you know, memes are not going to perform in that environment. Although there's been some memes that have outperformed over the summer, but you know that's very idiosyncratic. I would say that's, that's a significant alpha exhibition as opposed to you know something that's a, an indication of the broader market when it comes to memes as well does your traditional research sort of fall flat you can't really look into i don't know foreskin token the same way that you can look into a bitcoin or an ethereum what even is the research when you're looking at these tokens is it literally cute dog or costco is a big brand that people may want to buy a meme coin about is there any real technical analysis when it comes to it or are we playing with a completely different beast here you know like i said we had a perspective on what we thought with could be and that it was an echo trade on on bonk. Today, we're not really looking for these small cap tokens that have, you know, very speculative holder bases. Today, you know, the research, like I said, is looking at the largest market cap memes and putting together a portfolio to get that exposure and then holding our, our longer term holds. I, you know, we're aware of a number of different strategies that you can use to try and identify small cap tokens, you know, what's the holder base, how quickly is the number of wallets increasing, how well distributed are the coins, what are the, what, what's the trading volume relative to market cap, you know, who's the team behind it. A lot of this stuff nowadays is, you know, there's a meme industrial complex in the sense that there's a lot of insiders behind these things. And if you're not aware of who they are and privy to, to that insider group, it's really hard to invest in these things with any degree of you know certainty or, or risk management. So That's something that I'm seeing a lot more people speak about in the space is this influence of insiders and KOLs. And it seems like there's something going on underground that the public don't know about, I don't know about, but it feels like something interesting is is going on there. I assume you guys as a hedge fund have, have no involvement in that. Speaking about hedge funds, do you think we'll see more hedge funds sort of look at 
meme coins as an investment opportunity because I feel like that's something that's fairly unique about Stratos is that you guys are taking memes seriously. But earlier on in the year, it seemed like some hedge funds were paying attention to memes, but that has sort of died down. Do, do you think we'll see hedge funds take it more seriously like you guys are? I think it's an inevitability because memes are only going to grow in aggregate market cap. They're likely to continue to grow a, as a percentage of the overall crypto market cap. And so any any funds that are interested in outperforming the market, especially after what we've seen in the last year, where basically the only way to outperform the market was to be overweight Bitcoin, soul and memes, they're going to be focusing on it and interested in it. I think the question is whether funds are able to and whether their LPs let them do that. I think that's a different discussion, but I think most crypto fund managers, if they could, would already be investing in memes. What are those sort of roadblocks to hedge funds being able to invest in meme coins? It just depends on the investor base in a lot of cases. So if you have an investor base who only wants you to invest in fundamental tokens like DeFi, for example, they're not going to want you to invest in memes. And they may have a strong philosophical aversion to memes and what they're about. And it might be a legal requirement of the funds not to invest in memes, or it may just be something where from a relationship perspective, the, the LPs are unhappy about that and, and don't want you to do it. So, you know, I don't know the ins and outs of, their, of everyone else's fund limited partnership agreements or their relationship with their LPs. So it's hard for me to yeah. say exactly. But one of the reasons why we set our fund up the way we did and we seeded it with partner capital was so that we could do what we wanted to do is the intention was let's run this fund the way that we run our own money, as opposed to, you know, let's go out and try and raise money and explain to LPs why we're investing in memes. Let's just do it and show them the returns after the fact, prove to them why they should be participating in that with us. Do you think we'll ever see memes enter the traditional finance space? We've sort of seen it in a way with GameStop. That's a meme stock in, in its own sense. But we've got a Bitcoin ETF. We've got an Ethereum ETF. Do you think we'll ever see an ETF that bundles together a bunch of, as you put it, blue chip meme coins? I could see that. I think it depends on what the you know who the SEC chairman is over the next few years. I certainly think that there would be investor demand there, whether that's the type of thing that the wirehouses and large investment banks are actually pitching to their retail investor base, like Bitcoin ETFs, that I think is harder to see happening in the short term. Remember, most of the money in the world today is held by boomers. And, you know, boomers came up in an era where, you know, value investing buying fundamentals, trying to analyze discounted cash flows. That's how you invested. And that's that's how you made money. And so it's only the younger generations that I think are more open-minded about these types of things like memes, just because they've seen value not work their entire life. You know, value has underperformed growth in the stock market for decades now. So I think, you know, that shift is, is happening when you think about the money f- eventually trickling its way down to millennials and Gen Z, which, you know, will happen over the next couple of decades, either through just normal economic activity or inheritance from millennials, boomer parents or grandparents, then I think the mindset will change. But I think we're still some way away from that, which means there's alpha to be had. If everyone's buying the S&P 500 and everyone's buying the obvious things, even in crypto over the next few years, the things that get neglected are oftentimes, you know, the contrarian bets. They, they don't have as much capital arbitraging all of the alpha out and therefore they're the areas where you can still generate outsized returns. We've sort of touched on it a couple times throughout this interview. I'm really interested to get your perspective on Pump.Fun and the influence that it's had within the meme coin space. It's birthed huge meme coins like Billy, Michi, and like most of the celebrity meme coins that came out throughout that whole saga. What do you think the biggest influence Pump.Fun has had on the meme coin space? I think we've been really talking about it this whole discussion, right? The permissionless creation of memes in a way that's very low cost and easy to do has just been the primary driver of the proliferation of memes. So I think from a market cap perspective, memes are growing in aggregate. But your average meme is likely to now be a lower market cap than it would have been in the past. Just because they're so easy to create, the likelihood that any one of those memes is going to be able to generate any real attention or or capital inflows is that much lower. So it's made it a a lot harder to grind through the trenches unless you have some inside information, essentially. I've seen some people suggest that Pump.Fun kind of was the bull run 
it was what created all these memes that got to huge market caps. It had a couple hundred million dollar market cap tokens and stuff like that. But it feels like we're sort of turning a corner now where people were thinking that, I don't know, Pump.Fun have got to raise their fees to launch a token. Do you think that the protocol has been a net positive or a net negative for the ecosystem? I would agree with you. I think we're starting to see the level of activity on Pump.Fun level out. I think that's for two reasons. One is what we've been saying, the level of competition is too high and thus the likelihood that someone's going to come in and bid your main once you launch it, it's lower because people are starting to realize this this is just too hard to do. It's not like where a few months ago, people were seeing you know every hundredth meme potentially be a 10x. And so that was driving people to really get involved and build bots to bid new memes and things like that. I think the other thing is just from a you know broader macro perspective, we've had liquidity declining. You know When I say liquidity, I mean dollar liquidity globally declining over the last few months. And so it's created this kind of like PVP atmosphere that makes it very hard to be very profitable trading memes. I think in terms of how it impacts the space, things that bring attention to crypto long-term or net positive, I think pumped up fund is in that category. On an individual market participant basis, I think there are some people who definitely have have gotten burned trading memes, which is really unfortunate because that's capital that could otherwise have been used in the space more productively. You know, I I try not to project too much judgment onto what people build in crypto. You know, as long as it's not an outright scam, I think let the space evolve the way it wants to evolve. Clearly, there was a desire for people to engage in meme trading and, and creating new memes. And I think that's great. It's people benefiting from the permissionless nature of crypto. I personally view it as a net positive. I think, I don't know, some of the moments that have come out of it, it's just been very interesting to see the trade of memes, as you mentioned, become a completely different ball game over the past 10 or so months since it's been launched. I think it launched in January, actually, so maybe eight months. I would possibly argue that it's been more of a positive for Solana than it has for meme coins itself. I feel like people are sort of getting burnt out on meme coins. There's so many now that people are kind of, I don't know, they're not wanting to trade memes as much, but it became the killer app on Solana. I can't really think of much else, like Polymarket, obviously this is huge, but that's not Solana. The main killer app for this ball run for me was Pump.Fun, and that's made Solana one of the, like you said, we're sort of considering it a major now. So do you think it's been more of a benefit for meme coins or Solana itself? I completely agree agree with you. I think two things. First of all, if you look at the total growth and market cap of Solana versus the total growth and market cap of memes, excluding Doge and SHIB and you know the pre-pumped up on memes, it's probably the case that Solana has benefited most from a aggregate market cap increase perspective. If you were to sum up the value of all of the memes launched on Solana this year versus the increase in market cap of Solana this year, I think Solana would be greater. So I think to your point, that's that's correct. I think also, if you think about dApps, you could argue that they're kind of like B to B to C user acquisition channels. And what I mean by that is, you know, you've got Solana and then you build Pump.Fun or some other dApp on top of it. And then it's the, the consumers are engaging with Pump.Fun, but really the value actually ultimately flows to Solana. And so that's kind of the, the crux in some ways of the FAT protocol thesis and, you know, why L1s are valued so highly. There's a little bit more to it than just that. But yeah, I, I think that it's just an example of that. And there'll be another thing like that. And, you know, I think the good thing also for Solana is by bringing those users into it, it's kind of acted as a forcing function for people to try out the UX on Solana and experience how different it is from Ethereum L1 and, and even some of the you know L2s and, and all of the complexities that go along with using those. And so I think that's also a net positive for Solana. Another factor that I've sort of noticed in this turning of the tides against Pump.Fun has sort of been the general market downturn as well. And it sort of gets me concerned for what would happen to the meme coin market in a possible bear market that we may be entering right now. If we do enter a crypto winter, what do you think happens to memes? So I I think that's very unlikely. My perspective is we're Mm -hmm. near the bottom of the market for this summer and things are likely to turn around over the next few months. There will be another winter, if not soon 
eventually. It's just the nature of crypto. And I think one should expect that memes are going to trade at a high beta to the majors, meaning that memes will underperform Bitcoin and ETH. You know, they may not underperform all the other subsets of alts, but they could certainly underperform the majors. So, you know, be aware, you know, don't convince yourself that memes are in a super cycle and are never going to round trip because it's crypto after all. So that was my my thought process as well. For my final question, what are those factors that need to be in place for a thriving crypto meme coin market? In terms of price performance, one of the key things is just going to be global liquidity. So crypto trades on global liquidity. And so once the Fed is printing money again, and you know, there's a number of different ways that the Fed prints money at, rather than just going out and saying, hey, we're engaging in quantitative easing again. It's a foregone conclusion that Money will be printed to finance the U.S. government deficit and to, to help pay down some of the debt that the U.S. government has. And pretty much every other developed economy is in a similar place. China is very likely to start a stimulus program that's going to be substantial in terms of its size, and that's also going to trickle down into crypto. And so both of those things are likely to drive you know continued crypto price performance, particularly in the majors. And if you think of Bitcoin like the sun, all of the other crypto tokens kind of orbit around it. So if we have Bitcoin really performing well, then we're going to see memes pick up and perform well again. Within memes, though, the, the question really is which ones. And so one of the reasons why our portfolio is positioned the way it is, is we think it's very likely that the blue chips are going to perform with a two or three X beta to Bitcoin. And so it's basically free leverage. Obviously, there's more volatility there. But overall, you know, from a, from a risk adjusted return perspective, we think that's attractive. The rest of the memes, the long tail, it's much harder to say. You know, they have the potential for alpha even during bearish summer, which we've had. You know, you have things like Mog and Popcat that have done extremely well over the summer. But then, you know, there's going to be literally hundreds of thousands of other memes that do nothing, even though we have a full-blown bull market and, you know, euphoric altcoin phase. I think asset selection is very important within memes and, you know, we're positioned accordingly. But I think, you know, some people will be able to outperform considerably just by picking the right things. But I do not think that it's obvious which thing is right and which thing isn't. You got to buy a lottery ticket to win it though, mate. <laughs> Thank you so much that, for joining me, Renick. financial nihilism discussion. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We spoke about financial nihilism in our first interview and I agree. I, I think apathy to the traditional ways of making money, be it real estate or the S&P 500, is a big driving factor to why people are investing in meme coins. The amount of DJs I've spoken to who are trying to get financial freedom off of buying and selling the most random meme coins that have no fundamentals behind them and yeah, just memes that they're just trying to flip a quick buck. Best of luck. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Renick. Thanks for having me. Cheers.